is it possible you might be overdosing on the wrong vitamin E? Vitamin E is very interesting because you'll see reports that, oh yeah, vitamin E causes cancer. It causes cardiovascular damage. Now, how can that be? We will talk about that and I'm going to clear up the confusion so it'll all make sense. In 1964, it was discovered that there is another vitamin E compound. Vitamin E is not just one thing. It's many things in two different groups. We're just going to compare tocotrienols to tocopherols as far as antioxidants, as far as the potency. Tocotrienols, hands down, are so much more powerful. Let's say, for example, you just take one isolated part of the vitamin E complex, alpha tocopherol, and you're taking it synthetically or even naturally. It's going to be more of a pro-oxidant and create more damage. This is why you see mixed reviews on vitamin E. Like, wow, one study will show that it creates some damage. Another study, it shows that it can actually help someone in some way, but you're not looking at the whole picture because in nature, antioxidants never come like that. Let's talk a little bit more about these tocotrienols because this might be new to you. I really like uh, the tocotrienols, which just happens to have an anti-cancer effect. It also is a very potent anti-inflammatory as well. In animal studies, they found that the tocotrienol can even increase lifespan by 19%. Some people might correlate that over to humans, probably just because of the antioxidant effect. It's very powerful protecting something against oxidation. That leads us to the next thing that tocotrienols are really good at, neuroprotection. Let's say, for example, someone had a stroke and they need some quick repair. Tocotrienols would be the answer for that. And it definitely protects the neurons in the brain against oxidative damage. It's really good for any type of neurodegenerative diseases. That includes Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia. Tocotrienols also have a similar effect to statins as far as what they can do to oxidative LDL, which is behind uh, inflammation inside the arteries. In one study, within six months, dramatically decreased atherosclerotic lesions. And over time, 18 months, they could barely find those lesions. All the things that vitamin E can help you with, it's the arteries, the arteries that are involved in blood flow to the heart, as well as what tocotrienols can do to the heart muscle itself. People can have heart attacks, not from a clogged artery, but just the muscle just doesn't have the oxygen and just cramps up and then you have a heart attack. If someone adds intense exercise on top of that, you can imagine the level of oxidative stress is like off the charts. I think after a workout, a person should take tocotrienols. Tocotrienols can actually increase the oxygen carrying capacity. If they took that after they worked out, they would see a, uh, a great improvement in recovery. A lot of people that do high altitude training or even climb mountains take more vitamin E because when you're at high altitudes, there's definitely a lot more oxidative stress. I probably personally would not take a tocopherol. I would take tocotrienols because they're more potent. You want to take like maybe smaller amounts and spread them out through the day. Anyone with uh, age-related cognitive decline should be on a good tocotrienol supplement. There's also some interesting data on using tocotrienols to help reverse some of the damage from radiation. Even the the military is studying that as well because they found in mice studies that even lethal doses of radiation can be mitigated with these tocotrienols. There's also a pretty potent scar tissue protection benefit. If you have inflammation in your liver, for example, and you take tocotrienols, it can slow down the progression going into the scar tissue, which I'm talking about cirrhosis. What about tocopherols? Should we take them at all? Do they work better for certain things? There are several advantages for taking tocopherol. Number one, widespread availability. They're in a lot more foods. Green vegetables that have chlorophyll in seeds, in nuts. They're in olives, olive oil. Another thing about uh, tocopherols is that there's a lot more research on tocopherols as an antioxidant and what it can do. It's good for overall uh, protection of the cell membranes and oxidative stress. But tocotrienols are more potent. They're a lot more expensive. Tocopherols, you can get in a lot of different foods. It's easy to get it. But tocotrienols, it's harder to get tocotrienols. There's a source called Anetto, but I don't think many people consume Anetto. You'd have to get that as a supplement. Probably the biggest source 
of tocotrienols is in palm oil. I'm not talking about the refined version, but sometimes you can find a red palm oil or a unrefined palm oil. It's loaded with tocotrienols. It's also a good source of tocopherols as well. It's like 70% tocotrienols and 30% tocopherols. There is some data, I don't know if this is true, where if you take both tocotrienols and tocopherols together, they tend to compete. I don't know if that's true. I think over time, we're going to see a lot more interesting things about these tocotrienols. There's more research being done on this. There's research heavy into the areas of helping unblock arteries. What you also have to realize too, in nature, vitamin E doesn't just work by itself. It works together with vitamin C. It works with other nutrition. These antioxidants are recycled over and over again. For example, you're really focused on vitamin E, but you're deficient in vitamin C, you can create a problem with that because they both need each other to help recharge each other. I know sometimes people just want to know what brand do you recommend? I don't have a brand. I take a high quality tocotrienol blend. I usually take it right after I work out. I definitely feel a difference from that. A lot of times when people take vitamins, they don't necessarily feel a difference because they're working a lot deeper. And that's why a better understanding about nutrition just helps you understand what you should be taking or what you shouldn't be taking based on your particular weaknesses or problems you're trying to solve. I have a lot of inflammatory genes going on. I'm always trying to mitigate that. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it and here's why. Here's you, here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today.